All right, 26, we are given the derivative of f and the second derivative of f, and we have to figure out which of these would be true. Okay, so it looks like we want to study the, um, the, the behavior of the function and, and, and see where it's increasing or decreasing and where it's concave up or concave down. So um, we look at the first derivative and so the first derivative, like in this table, we want to study the zeros. So it's zero at x equals one. So this will be the line x equals one. And let's see what's going on with the derivative. We just care about the sign. So let's say we're going to pick on, let's take x, f prime of zero. f prime of zero is a natural log of zero over zero. That, that's going to be undefined. So let's, um, let's look at another one. f prime of one half, let's say. Natural log of one half over one half. And this will be a negative over positive. So that means the derivative is negative here. So that, that tells you that the function is decreasing. Now let's see to the right of one. Let's pick like f prime of two. f prime of two, natural log of two over two. Positive over positive. So it's going to be positive, And that means the function is increasing. OK, so now let's look at the. Um, Let's look at the second derivative. The second derivative, it's going to be 0 at x equals, x equals 1. And no, I'm sorry, x equals e. Because the natural log of e is, is 1. 1 minus 1 will be 0. So for the second derivative, let's make another table here. Let's study what's going on at x equals e. Not a very good table, so I apologize in advance. Um, so then let's see what's going on to the left of e and to the right of, to the right of e. And um, let's check, like, again, a simple value. We can check f double prime of 1. And we can pick f double prime of, like, of 10 or something. So f double prime of 1 would be 1 minus the natural log of 1. Natural log of 1 is 0 over 1. So this is a positive over a positive. So the second derivative is positive. So that means the graph is concave up on this interval. Now let's look at the second derivative of 10. That'll be 1 minus the natural log of 10 over 100. And this is going to be a negative. It'll be negative over a positive, which will be negative. So the graph will be concave down. Hope my pictures aren't too like, hard to understand. So let's see what would make sense. So it's saying f is decreasing for x is greater than 1. So, so um, a and that's correct, because we're looking at this graph. So a and b are possible. Um, no, I'm sorry. a and b would not work, because f is increasing when x is greater than 1. So this is already wrong. a and b will be wrong. So we have c, d, and e. Now let's look at c f is increasing for x greater than 1, and the graph of f is concave down for x is greater than e. And that's true. This is actually our answer. Our answer is going to be c, because it's not concave up. And yeah, it's not, it wouldn't, um, it's not increasing from 0 to e either. So the answer is definitely c. Or 27, if f is the function given by f of x from 4 to 2x of the square root of t squared minus t, then f prime of 2 is, 
Okay, so this involves the second fundamental theorem of calculus. And what that says is when you're taking the derivative, let's say if it, if it was just, if you were just going from four to X, then like, let's, for this, if you're just going from four to X, the same function, let's say T squared minus T DT, this would just be equal to the square root of X squared minus X. That's simple. That's all, that's all you got to worry about there. Um, now, we're not just given x, we're given 2x. So all we have to do is plug 2x in for t and then multiply it by the derivative of 2x. This is going to be involved chain rule. So for example, Well, actually, let me first write it. Let me first, let me first do this. So four times two X times the square root of T squared minus T DT. Let's forget about the two right now. This is just gonna be equal to the square root of two X squared, which is just four X squared minus 2x times the derivative of 2x, so times 2. So that would, that's what f prime of x would be. F prime, so it was just f prime of x would be that. But we're looking at f prime of 2, so we just plug 2 into here. So this would just be the square root of 4 times 2 squared, or 16 minus 4 times 2 which is the square root of 12 times two. And that's just gonna be E, our answer will be E. All right, last one for the multiple choice. All right, we're given that Y is the inverse sine function of five X and we wanna find the derivative. So there's, so this is, this one, an inverse tangent function, those are the ones you will probably want to memorize for the inverse function derivative. They come up rarely, but there's usually maybe one or two in the whole test. Um, so what this says is that the derivative, if it's just, let's, let's look at a um, chain rule. If it's the derivative of the inverse sine of u, this will be equal to u prime over the square root of one minus u squared. That's really what you just have to remember. Um, so the u here is five x. So du dx would just be five. So then in that case, we would just have five on top over the square root of one minus five x squared. So five over the square root of one minus 25 X squared. And that's it, that's all you gotta do here. So the answer will be E. All right, so that's it for the first part of the multiple choice section. So I hope that helps, good luck.